So in this video, we will talk about what happens when you combine resistors in series and parallel. How do you calculate the equivalent resistance? Or given a target resistance, how can you design a network of resistors to achieve that value? So I go through each of these in more detail in a previous video. I'm just gonna recap the equations really quick here. So for resistors in series, if you have N resistors, so R1, R2, up to Rn, then the equivalent resistance between the two endpoints of that entire network is REQ equals R1 plus R2 plus up to Rn, or using summation notation, the sum from I equals one to N of Ri. If you have resistors connected in parallel, again, for a network of resistors going from R1, R2, up to Rn, the equivalent resistance between those endpoints, adds inversely. So one over R EQ equals one over R1 plus one over R2 plus up to one over Rn. Using summation notation, that is sum from I equals one to N of one over R sub I. So let's now work through an example with say a more complicated network of resistors in series and parallel. So say I have a resistor R1 that is in series with a set of two resistors R2 and R3 and a final resistor R4 in series with that. And I want to know the equivalent resistance of this entire network. And you'll notice I didn't give you numbers for these resistors yet because I think when you start getting complicated like this, it's easier to work everything out symbolically using the variables and arrive at one final equation and then go plug all your numbers in. If you start plugging numbers in right at the beginning and you make a mistake, that mistake is going to propagate the whole way through and then you have to go back and do all your equations again. So we're going to work through it symbolically first with these variables and then I'll give you some numbers and we can plug them in. So. I've been forgetting to say this in the previous videos, but remember, before I'm about to do a derivation, you can always pause and pause the video, see if you can work through it yourself before I give the answer away. So why don't you try that here, pause the video and see if you can come up with an equation for the equivalent resistance as a function of these four resistances. So there's more than one way you could go about doing this, but I'm going to show you how I would do it. I would recommend breaking this down into more manageable chunks. And I'm going to do that by saying, okay, I have three sort of sections in series here. I have R1, and that is in series with this combined R2 and R3 in parallel, and then I have R4. So I'm gonna make up a new variable that I'm gonna call R23, and that is the equivalent resistance of R2 and R3 here. So. I'm, and I'm gonna say, I don't really care what that is yet. I'm just gonna write out this equation that I know these three things are now in series. So the equivalent resistance of that network is R1 plus R23 plus R4. But if I was given values for all four of these, I don't know what R23 is yet. So I also need an equation for that. And I know that R23 is just R2 and R3 in parallel. So I have one over R23 equals one over R2 plus one over R3. So if I wanted to get everything just as one equation, say if you were writing a MATLAB script or something, or you just wanna have a single line of code that does this instead of two different lines, then I need to solve for R2, three here and plug it in up there. Or you can leave it written out as two separate lines like this and then plug in all the numbers in two, two sets of calculations, whichever way you prefer. So. Now I have those two equations. I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of make up some numbers for this. Say I have a 100 ohm resistor, a 220 ohm resistor, my one kilo ohm resistor here, and a 47 ohm resistor there. I can now go in and just plug those numbers into these equations and if you typed in one of the numbers wrong or want to change a value, then it's easy because you already have these equations worked out and it's just a matter of plugging in the different numbers to get the different final REQ. So again, I need R23 first. So I'm gonna solve for R23 is one over one kilo ohm plus one over 47 ohms. That's going to give me R23 equals 44.89 ohms. 
and then I plug, again, that into my equation for the total equivalent resistance, REQ equals R1, which is 100 ohms, plus 44.89 ohms, plus R4, which is 220 ohms. And then that gives me the final answer for my equivalent resistance of 364.89 ohms. So a little more work to chug, chug through all the math than when you just have a simple combination of resistors that are only in series and parallel. But again, if you work out the equations in advance like this, then it's very easy to go through and just systematically plug in the numbers to get your final answer. Now, as usual, life probably isn't going to consist of people just handing you homework problems and asking you to solve for the final resistance. You might be designing a circuit and decide that you need some certain resistance value, but then maybe you only have certain resistors available that don't match that value. So again, let's pretend you only have a bag of 100 ohm resistors available. You don't have any values, but you need a 125 ohm resistor. So how could you go about designing or building a 125 ohm resistor with only 100 ohm resistors? So again, remember that resistors in series add, REQ equals R1 plus R2, and resistors in parallel add inversely, and the resistance goes down, one over REQ equals one over R1 plus one over R2. So technically, you have more unknowns than you really have equations here, right? We only have one known. We know REQ, and for example, there, there could be different, more than one way to solve mathematically for R1 and R2 over here on the right, but we are limited by kind of knowing that we only have 100 ohm resistors available, so we only have a fixed set of values for R1 and R2. So depending on the value, it might take a little bit of trial and error since you can't exactly solve for it algebraically. But in this case, I've picked one that's hopefully kind of intuitive for how you would figure it out. So we know that we want REQ to be 125 ohms. And we can get somewhere in that range if we, if we start with a 100 ohm resistor and put something in series with it, right? So if we did 100 plus 25, then that would give us 125 ohms. So we could put a single 100 ohm resistor in series with something that needs to have an equivalent resistance of 25 ohms. And in this case, we know that 100 ohms is bigger than 25 ohms, so to get a lower equivalent resistance, we would need to put resistors in parallel. So we can think about our network of, okay, what happens if we put two resistors in parallel? We already did that calculation in a previous video. That is only gonna drop the equivalent resistance to 50 ohms. So when you add two identical resistors in parallel, it cuts the equivalent resistance in half. So hopefully you can see where this is going now. We have our 100 ohm resistor in series here, and we've put two 100 ohm resistors in parallel. That drops the equivalent resistance here to 50 ohms, so that would give us a total equivalent resistance of 150 ohms, which is not quite where we want to be yet. So we can cut that parallel resistance in half again by adding two more resistors. So we are going to put four 100 ohm resistors in parallel 100, 100, 100, 100. And in that case, the equivalent resistance of this section is going to be one over R equals one over 100 plus one over 100 plus one over 100 plus one over 100. And in that case, that is again going to cut that resistance in half again and give us an equivalent resistance of 25 ohms. So we now have what we were after we have our 100 ohm resistor there, and the total equivalent resistance is 100 plus 25 equals, oops, 125 ohms. So thinking about that a little more systematically in case that was confusing, step one, think about is your target resistance greater than or less than resistors you have Okay, if your target resistance is greater than, greater than what you have, then start by combining things in series. Okay, start with one of the resistors you have plus something else in series, which may be resistors in parallel or even more resistors in series if you need to keep <clears throat> increasing the resistance. If the target resistance 
is less than the individual resistance of the resi resistors you have, then start in parallel with one of your resistors and then where you're gonna add stuff in parallel. So that's kind of the systematic process you can think where you start with what you have and then hone in on the number that you finally have or finally need. And again, there's technically more than one way to do this. So you could come up with a redundant or kind of unnecessary way that uses more resistors than you actually need. So for example, say that I already know, oops, wrong color. that this unit of four 100 ohm resistors in parallel has an equivalent resistance of 25 ohms. I know that this is 25 ohms here. So I could say, oh, I know I want to get up to 125 ohms total. So I am going to chain five of those units in series. I'm not going to draw them all here, but I could do five of those, each of which is 25 ohms. And that is still going to get me up to 125 ohms total, but you can see that's using way more resistors than I need to. So that's four resistors per block, four, eight, 12, 16, 20 resistors, whereas my solution on the previous slide only used five resistors. So in general, resistors cost money and they take up space. So you're not gonna to want to use more of them than you need. So even though this solution is mathematically valid here, it's not really a practical one.